right, here we're going to look at some parts of the question number three from the 2016 exam. And it says, to determine the molar mass of an unknown metal, M, a student reacts iodine with an excess of the metal <clears throat> to make the water-soluble compound Mi2. And it's represented by the equation above. Sorry, I don't have that there. Hold on one sec. Ta-da, there's the equation. M plus I2 makes Mi2. So this reaction proceeds until all of the iodine is consumed. The metal is in excess. The Mi2 solution is quantitatively collected, heated to remove the water, and the product is dried and weighed to a constant mass. So here we see the experiment below. I've got an empty beaker on the scale. I add the metal to it. So when I subtract that, it would tell me how many grams of metal. Then I add the iodine, and so this minus this would give me how much iodine. I add water. The reaction happens, so I've got Mi2 in the solution. I've got leftover M because it reacted until all of the iodine was gone. I collect the solution, which is just Mi2. I heat it and reheat it, and I'm left with the Mi2 solid, so I drove the water off. And here's the data in the table form. All right. So given that the metal, again, is in excess, calculate the number of moles of I2 that reacted. Okay, so again, when we look up above, beaker plus metal, beaker plus metal plus I2. So if I subtract these two numbers, that should give me my grams of I2. 127.57 minus the 126.549. And then I just have to divide by the molar mass and I get a really small amount of moles of iodine. Now, probably a potential sig fig question. I have four numbers in my grams of iodine, and so the zeros in front don't count. 4023 does. So you could have answered like this, or you could have answered 4.023 times 10 to the negative 3 moles. Either way. Now, they want us to calculate the molar mass of the metal grams per mole. So I'm going to need my grams of metal, so that would be my 126.549 minus my 125.457, and that'll give me my gr grams. Oop, I'm sorry. Because the metal was in excess, I cannot use those two numbers. See, common error. I'm human, sometimes. I can't use these two because from my pictures above leftover metal right so I have to use this information my 1.284 grams of Mi2 minus my grams of iodine that are in there so there's only the 0.263 grams of metal that's in the Mi2 but since it's an equimolar, it's the same, you know, it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, one-to-one -one ratio, then I have the same moles of metal as I do iodine. So my 0.263 grams of metal divided by my 0 0.004023, 65.4 grams per mole. Maybe they could have asked you to identify that, too. If you go to the periodic table, that would be your good friend, zinc. But they just wanted the molar mass. Alright, now the student hypothesizes that the compound formed is ionic. Propose an experimental test that we could perform to support the hypothesis. Explain how the results would support the hypothesis. This should hopefully conjure up some images of our ionic versus molecular lab. So check for conductivity dissolve some of the compound in water or melt it and see if it conducts electricity or check to see if it has a high melting or boiling point temperature. So if we do see conductivity or we do get high melting or boiling temperatures then that would definitely confirm that this would be an ionic compound. Alright, last part. The student hypothesized that bromine will react with the metal more vigorously than iodine because bromine is a liquid at room temperature. 
So explain why iodine is a solid at room temperature, whereas bromine is a liquid. Our explanation should clearly reference the types and strengths of the intermolecular forces present. So we're comparing bromine and iodine IMFs. Well, Br2 and I2, those are both Hofbrinkel's diatomics, completely nonpolar. So we're only dealing with London dispersion forces. Since iodine is a larger, more massive molecule, it has stronger LDFs because it is more polarizable. Don't just talk about the mass. You gotta say that it's more polarizable due to that larger mass. Therefore, those stronger LDFs account for a higher melting point, holds those atoms together closer, and that's why, I'm sorry, molecules, I2 molecules. That's why iodine is a solid at room temperature, whereas bromine is only a liquid. Again, recognizing that they're diatomic, totally nonpolar, only having LDFs, but the, don't just say the bigger molecule has stronger LDFs, it's because it's more polarizable. Make sure you bring that in. All right, I hope that helped, and I'll see you soon.